When you include people with disabilities in meetings, remember, nothing about us without us. Please make sure meetings are welcoming and as, inclusive, as inclusive as possible. Hello everyone, I'm Max Barrows. I am the Outreach Director of Green Mountain Self-Advocates. Today, our topic we would like to share with you is making meetings inclusive for peers. Speaking of peers, I would like to have a good colleague of mine introduce herself. Ready? Hello, my name is Nicola Blank, Advocacy Coordinator and member of Autism Now Advisory Committee. So Nicole, I would like to ask you about your experience in meetings. My first question to you is, how do you feel when you are stuck and you don't know what to say? I can feel lost. I can feel like a token. I can feel excluded. My head can start to spin and it can be overwhelming. So what can people do to make sure you don't get stuck? Do you have any tips on what to do to be in tune with what's going on in a meeting? The group should do brief check-in from time to time to check for understanding. Face-to-face -face is better than meeting over the phone. I would recommend trying video conferencing by using programs such as Google Hangouts, Skype. For me, it's always better when I can see the person who is talking. Having visuals are nice, like a PowerPoint or pictures of the people at the meeting. Sometimes I text back and forth with an ally or a support person to stay focused, especially when it is boring. All materials should be in large print 14 to 16 font. It is beneficial to have them ahead of time. For people who experience sensory challenges, is there ways to provide a sensory friendly environment that you can think of? Limit the use of fluorescent lights, let people take sensory breaks as needed and provide a quiet space to work with a limited amount of background noise. During a meeting, if someone is having difficulty responding or is silent after being asked a question, how can the support person or their co-worker help them out? They can ask prompting questions like, what do you think about that? Paraphrase what was discussed in other words. They can summarize in plain English what was discussed. And lastly, the leader needs to give everyone a chance to speak. If you are discussing policy issues, for instance, it is crucial to ask people what they think about a certain issue and not move on until everyone has had an opportunity to comment or give their two cents. What do you do when someone, when you have someone blurt out something like during a meeting, or as in other words, may interrupt or talk over people? There are many times where people can forget what they want to say if they don't get it off their chest right away. Some things that people could do are encourage them to write down what they want to say, like on a notepad or iPad. They could, they could type their ideas when Skyping with their peers and support staff. Maybe they could sit next to the facilitator of the meeting so that they can let them know when they have something to say. What are some things that people do that, that do not help you to participate in a meeting? It does not help if you rush the person or speak for the person. Allies and leaders should take a look at the book 10 Things Every Person with Autism Wishes You Knew. This gives great advice about what to do. For instance, behavior is communication. Criticize gently. Look for sensory issues first. And my personal one, you know, provide structure. Many people with ASD depend on structure in their day-to-day -day lives. What does one person do when the other person gets stuck or changes the subject and is not responding? Redirect the person back to the subject or issue that was being discussed. Ask the person if they just needed time to think. Ask, is the issue bothersome to you or uncomfortable? Practice patience. Suggest that the person go for a walk to get a breath of fresh air and chill out. Joining me today is a great colleague of mine, Kyle Moriarty. Hi, how you doing, Kyle? Uh, would you like to introduce yourself?
Ty. self-advocates for more than three years. I started working when I was in high school. I meet with Go. legislators and represent Go. my peers at many policy meetings with other advocacy Go. groups. Go. So, Kyle, um, I'm curious to know, what has been your experience with typing uh, to communicate? Attitude of he can't speak, he doesn't know. I have had to live with for many years. I am now able to demonstrate what I know through supported type communication. I feel people understand me now. I show them and they understand me. It cannot get any better than communicating from within me. What is your advice for people when they meet a person who types to communicate? Some people judge a person because of the way they look. The most important thing to remember is that not speaking people have lots to say and all we need is people to take the time to hear our thoughts. Understand that my goal in life is to be educated and to be an advocate for people with disabilities. So my next question for you, Kyle, is can you share some tips for peers who run meetings so they can make sure everyone is included? The most important thing is to slow down. It takes time for someone who types to get out what they are trying to say and you have to be willing to work at their pace. It works better when you let them finish their thought before responding. Um, so, is there anything else you like to say or add? or? It is so important to presume competence of a person who types to communicate. Treat people as intelligent and let them show you what they know through their communication. Don't judge a person by how they look or how their body moves. They have a lot to share if you give them a chance. I know um, that in my self-advocacy group, my peers want to help out uh, if someone is, oh, I would say, having you know a difficult time, hard time speaking up. So I'm wondering, uh, do you have any suggestions? Treat adults as adults. Use a typical tone of voice just as if speaking with a friend who uses their voice to communicate. Just because a person can't speak does not mean they can't understand. Also remember to speak to me directly, not to my support person or companion. Sometimes my peers don't know what to do. Just remember what it means to be a self-advocate. Avoid speaking for others. Encourage a person to speak on their own behalf. If you must restate something, be careful not to change the meaning. Let me make my own decisions. Don't take over and make decisions for me. 
It can be difficult for some of us to make quick decisions. Be patient and allow the person to take their time. So is there anything else uh, we can do that would be helpful? Good job. Find ways to include a person who types in a conversation. I know that people don't always have the time to slow down and wait for me to type what I am trying to say. But I really want to connect with my peers. There are times when one of my friends stops by to chat while I am typing. This is good because it feels really great to chat about things on my mind with someone I see every day. Do you have anything else uh, you would like to add? I have yeah. to be more willing to speak up and let people know how to best communicate with me. It is another thing that I am learning. The rewards are so much greater than the difficulties. Belonging to a self-advocacy group gives me a reason to strive for great things in my life. The barriers to communication that I experience at a group meeting are nothing compared to the isolation I would feel if I spent every day at home. More suggestions to keep in mind. Not all speech is intentional or meaningful. A word being blurted out does not always match what a person who is using supported typing will communicate. Do not try to finish a person's sentence or cut them off. Listen until they have finished talking or typing, even if you know or you think you know what they might say. Have a little block of time at the end of the meeting for people to respond when they couldn't earlier. Never pretend you understand what is being said when you really don't. Ask the person to repeat what they said or express it in a different way. Last few suggestions I have is when someone is usually quiet, you might say, I'm wondering if you have anything to say about this topic. You have been quiet for quite some time during this discussion and we don't want to leave you out. Look for something that indicates a person understands. Respond to any attempt the person makes to communicate. Keep in mind that not all communications are verbal. I hope this information will help you figure out how to feel more included in a meeting. Thank you so much for watching.